Mushroom Wonderland. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard. Thanks for joining Mushroom Wonderland here on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. If you're new to the channel, do a lot of talking about mushrooms, mainly wild mushrooms. I've been foraging the forests of the Pacific Northwest ever since I was a little kid, which led me to become the vice president of the local mycological society here. I also created this uh, page just about wild mushroom foraging and whatnot. Just always find myself in the woods looking at mushrooms, looking for mushrooms. And uh, it's just turned into a big deal and it turns out a lot of other people want to learn about these mushrooms out here. So being uh, just an enthusiast of mushrooms and a citizen mycologist, I just thought I'd start this channel to bring to you um, a lot of the wild mushrooms that I find out here. Um, they're mysterious and magical. They seem to pop up wherever they want. Um, they're kind of like treasure hunting or Easter egg hunting for adults. And I just find them captivating. And so uh, in the summer here in the Pacific Northwest, typically slow time of year for wild mushrooms because it really just stops raining. It gets really dry here in the west of the Rockies. Um, whereas east of the Rockies, the Midwest and the Eastern seaboard, y'all get like big thunderstorms and rainstorms. Uh, us here on the west coast we have super dry summers it's sprinkled twice in the last two months i mean literally a sprinkle not even enough to hold the dust down so the mushrooms all but stop growing here but there are certain mushrooms that you can find in the summertime there's a small fruiting of chanterelles that i've talked about in other videos and uh right now um late august we're almost to september and we've had such little amount of rain but that hasn't stopped specific species of mushrooms from growing. Uh, Latiparus uh, sulfurius or the Latiparus conifera cola, which are commonly known as the two uh, species of chicken of the woods that grow around here. Um, they can grow in the summertime and you can often find those on dead logs. And uh, like I said, the chanterelles, you can find those. There's a, a Tapanilla atrotamentosa, that's a type of uh, the velvet footed packs. It's a type of dying mushroom that you can find this time of year. And a few different types of Mycenas. But um, one of the more exciting ones, one of the more sought after mushrooms that we find here in um, the end of August, which I am surprised to actually see them growing this early. I seen them in Northern California and in Oregon, but today I'm gonna be showing you a, what is uh, known as a, a lobster mushroom. So there's one growing right here. You can see all this white. It's actually spores from Hypomyces lactiflorum is a scientific name of what's making this mushroom bright orange. You see that? Look at that, I pulled that right out of the moss. So this is what's known as a lobster mushroom. Look how bright orange and red, almost purplish that is. This one is old, so this has actually been growing for weeks here, and it's just hollow with worm holes. But this is actually a combination of two different mushrooms. Oh, there's maggots and flies coming out of this thing, so pretty gnarly. I'm gonna set this down and flip the camera around so you can see it. There you go. So there's actually two different mushrooms growing out of this situation. There's a, a, what's known as a host and then the parasite. So the host is known as Russula brevipes, a very common, big, plain, white mushroom that grows here uh, and grows all across the country, really, and around the world. Um, it's edible, but really boring. In Russia, they, they do like to eat the Russula brevipes. They they will pickle it and can it. Here we don't find uh, much desire in it because it is so plentiful, especially when the rain starts. But what's curious is I don't see them growing anywhere in the dry part of August, uh, like right now, but they were growing underneath the moss here where they were attacked by this parasite known as Hypomyces lactiflorum. And this, this entire mushroom then becomes parasitized it turns orange the gills kind of just get so contorted and consumed with the parasite that you can't even really decipher that this was a russell abrevipes at one point uh, now it is just called hypomyces lactiflorum what we're really after is the rind on this so so the white part i'm gonna i'm gonna bury this guy back up and let let the spores go back to the forest but i do see another one right over here so let's take a look 
pretty hard to spot but look at that really really sporulated out so all that white all this white stuff are are actually spores billions of spores for the hypomyces lactiflorum look at that and there's your lobster mushroom and uh and it is just so many spores it's it's like it's trying to grow mycelium right here um all kinds of you know activity happening in here this is this is pretty awesome this is uh this really is like a whole little microcosm of mycological activity right here so we've got mycelium growing from the spores and this is all myceliated and it's hard for me to tell you definitively that this is the spores from the russell abreva peas or if it's from the hypomyces lactiflorum um, i would be curious to know but i think that those spores are actually the hypomyces spores so so this is a spot where these mushrooms reoccur every year and this is this is too old this is no good to eat look inside of here we've got all kinds of uh you know wormholes and bugs inside there but this is extremely parasitized and this is really kind of a mixed forest i'm actually on the uh you know there's large mature um uh western hemlock and doug fir pseudosugo mencesii right here and and uh, these are all western hemlock and so these mushrooms are growing in a mycorrhizal association with the trees around here now they're not in association with these alder trees see these hardwood trees these are red alder so these are growing attached on the roots of some of these larger um conifers and so it's quite a quite a complex uh situation the mushroom is uh attached to the roots of these big evergreen trees and then the the host mushroom will grow in the same spot this area i find them every year i'll find evidence of lobster mushrooms growing here i was surprised to see these two growing right here pretty obvious to see because they really really can't hide you see they hide underneath this moss but yeah these guys are are growing in association with the trees so that has to be working for you and they also then have to be um, parasitized and there's some studies by a fella down in Oregon the mushroom marauder who's looking into the idea that it's actually the mycelium that becomes parasitized rather than just the fruiting body which is interesting so I do find it pretty interesting the idea that maybe the mycelium is actually what has been parasitized and these mushrooms are destined from the moment that they start to fruit that they're going to be lobster mushrooms but what's weird another weird thing is i find them in the same area every year the lobster mushrooms i also find them growing right next to um unparasitized russula brevipes so that would make me think that maybe it is just the fruiting bodies and not just, and not the mycelium, that every fruiting body growing from that mycelium is gonna, is gonna be parasitized with hypomyces. Doesn't seem to be the case because I can find them growing right near each other. And there's other videos on this channel where I show that example of a unparasitized one right next to a parasitized one. So either way, interesting deal. It's kind of weird that, uh, that these two different undesirable mushrooms come together to make a really desirable gourmet mushroom. Oh man, look at right here. Look at this. Boom, more lobsters. Let me flip this camera around. Check this out. Man, look at all the spores that thing put off. That is just crazy. There's another one growing right here. So very obvious here, right next to the path. And, uh, and very cool. So let's see if these ones are any closer to edible. See that? Man, it's just like frosty white. Oh, look at that big boy. So beautiful, Hypomyces lactiflorum. These are your lobster mushrooms. And the, this one is actually fresh enough. It's it's, uh, it's made a lot of spores, but uh, but this one's gonna go in the basket with us. Subscribe to this channel so that you can learn more about the awesome mushrooms growing out here that you can collect and take home or just impress your friends with. And it's like a treasure hunt in the woods every day of the year out here if you're looking in the right place. 
So areas like that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of cover that back up with bushes, you know? Nobody really needs to know. You know, that kind of goes for a lot of mushroom spots, you know. Keep them, keep them to yourself. Maybe share them with your friends and family. But just know, if you tell somebody about your mushroom spot, they're going to come back and get mushrooms. It's just been my experience. So cool. We got some mushrooms to take home tonight. Check this out right down here. Beautiful. There's a couple. Look at these. Gorgeous, gorgeous lobster mushrooms. Beautiful. We're gonna take those home. Dude, that was the super score on these three. Didn't really expect that. So we got a couple of the older ones, but these ones are extra choice. So they're coming in my handy dandy little foraging bag. I got my cool little knife and uh, what a find. What an amazing amazing find today didn't really expect that so so very cool i'm very stoked because i personally cannot eat chanterelles there's beautiful uh summer chanterelles going on right now but uh but i got a nice catch today of some hypomyces lactiflorum some awesome lobster mushrooms out here in the woods so get out here what they like is a conifer forest like this a lot of moss on the ground and stuff but they do seem to like it where a little bit of sun can break through that's in my experience and everywhere I find them, there's usually a little spot where the sun can break through. And it's a little bit like windier and more open than the chanterelles seem to like. But, uh, but in the same kind of habitat. So I hope you can get out there and find some. Always make sure to cross-reference your IDs with um, you know, a, a reputable field guide. Uh, or the internet can be a really valuable source. But just trying to ID mushrooms on this kind of shaky footage that I'm doing here on this video... Maybe not a good idea, although there are very few to none uh, lookalikes to lobster mushrooms. There really is nothing that looks like this, besides maybe a chicken of the woods that's going to be growing on a log, and um, those two are, are a good edible mushroom. Dang, I'm, I'm looking around for more of these lobster mushrooms right in the area, and I look down on this log, and look at this crazy fruiting of turkey tail, of Trimedes versicolor. So this is a very uh, widely known, probably the most studied um, medicinal mushroom there is in the world and this one you can tell it's got it's got these pores underneath these sure are growing in a weird weird stature look at that it's almost like a like a cap and stem mushroom and you see those concentric rings of different colors that are on the caps and they've got pores underneath here a poor surface very porous the false turkey tail or the sterium is just smooth under the cap these ones are a bit old but I've never seen a fruiting quite like this. This is very cool, grown on an old maple tree. And you can see they're just everywhere. So people use these to make teas and tinctures out of. Um, it's got, it's been more studied than any other mushroom. And it's claimed to have, uh, you know, effects for fighting cancer and stuff. So this one's just got shelves and shelves of it. Very cool. I have quite a bit of this at home and I have yet to use it. So I'm just gonna leave this here in nature but just thought that was kind of a cool thing to show y'all. Uh, all this Tremedes versicolor or the turkey tail, common turkey tail. Walking my way out of the woods, I look down on the side of the trail. What do we got here? But, oh baby. Not really a baby. This is a, a golden chanterelle. Cantharellus formosus. There's another little button here. But they honestly don't get much bigger than this in the summertime. So yeah, these are the chanterelles that everybody are after. They look different in the summertime because they're so dry out here. But you can find these just growing right along the side of the trail. They might look like something you're not familiar with because they are a duller color. Oh, hey, spider. Yikes. Get off of there. Run free. Go home. Okay. Anyways, I personally can't eat these chanterelles because they... They really mess up my guts, you know. I, I'm like allergic to them. But my wife likes them, and everybody around me likes them. They're very, very popular wild edible. So I really wasn't out looking for these. But as I'm walking back with my beautiful lobster mushrooms, I run across some Cantharellus formosus, or the Pacific Golden Chantrell. Look at that one. It kind of starts to bruise a little bit. Gold. 
more gold where it was roughed up and you can see those the current ridges or veins they're not like regular gills that's indicative of a chanterelle so there's these ones and there's white ones that grow in the same forest out near the coast you could find the rainbow chanterelle and all the gills will be more of this super bright orange color the uh, cantharellus roseo canis so these ones are just your average pacific golden chanterelles i'll come back to this forest in october sorry about the terrible camera work today but i'll come back out here in october when the rains really start and find a ton of these but they're going to be way bigger but these are still very edible for most people my wife will be excited to see those so a really successful day out here in the forest of the pnw in late august kind of been waiting around for the rain to start falling but there's no no reason to be waiting people get on out there find your lobster mushrooms find your turkey tails find your uh chanterelles what a what an awesome little 30 minute walk with my dog in the woods so hey i love y'all thanks for subscribing to mushroom wonderland we'll see you on the next episode peace out everybody